Uh, first of all, congratulations. It's absolutely delightful. Well, thank you. Oh, you. Oh, right on. How could you not love it? It's, it's, uh, it's a love letter to the fans. That's what you've been saying. I, I, I think, I mean, we went into this right from the get-go with a sense of giving something back to the fans who have watched from the beginning and people who loved the series. So that's kind of what the, you know, we all wanted to make the movie, but it was also, that was at the heart of what we were doing. Yeah. So I'm and glad also, that comes across. It's also a love letter from the fans, and this was at least partially crowdfunded, yeah? Yeah, I mean, we were going to do the movie anyway. The movie was funded, um, but we had some ideas for, uh, well, we wanted to involve the fans in some way. We were talking about how we could find a way to give back to the fans or let them participate on different levels. And the more we talked about it, the more, you know, eventually somebody on the staff said, this sounds like Kickstarter. And so we dove into that, but it, it blew us away. The response from the fans was yeah. ridiculous. I mean, you look at that credit roll at the end. Yeah, it's like 2,500 names, 2,500 people kicking into to the project. Which speaks, uh, I think, to, to the kind of, of, of rapt adoration people have for this show and these characters. Well, you guys experienced it on set, when the fans that were on set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, you see it firsthand. It's, uh, what we were talking earlier, like, the show's always amazed me. Just, like, you, you can never tell what's going to go, what people are going to be attracted to. And none of us had any idea after the first season of shooting the series. Like, I think I can speak for all of us when I say, like, pretty much thought that was it. Like, you know, at the time, Canadian television was, you'd be lucky if you got one season, never mind two. Right. And, but from day one, the show, the response has been surprising. And the movie has done exactly the same. I mean, the response, I was blown away by it. It's, I think I've told you this before, Brad, but Mark McKinney once told me, that Canadian television will forever be divided into two eras, before and after Corner Gas. Yeah, that, mean, that means the world to me. Yeah, coming um, from him. Yeah, yeah <laughs> because I, I look up to Mark McKinney a lot. I think he's uh, an incredible talent and an incredible mind. And when I heard that he'd said that, I, I just used that quote a little while ago yeah. just because of what it, what it means to me. Yeah. I hope he's true about that. Yeah. I hope he's right. But this is, I mean, the numbers of the people tuned into the show. I mean, because the common wisdom is Canadians will not watch Canadian TV unless it's, like, successful in the States. And this show broke that mold. This was a show that people embraced. Yeah, I mean, people still say, just because we're so, they're so used to this being the case, they would say Corner Gas was the highest rated Canadian comedy on TV, but during most of its run, it was the highest rated sitcom mm -hmm. beating, beating all the American shows. Yeah. That's never happened before. Who knows if it'll ever happen again? Yeah. So, I mean... I hope it does. I hope it happens all the time. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, uh, that's a real point of pride, the fact that we were able to do that. What do you think it is about the show that, that, that appeals so much to people and made them? I mean, again, it, it wasn't, they didn't just like this show. They loved this show. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Like, you, you, you can't... Because if you knew what the recipe was, you'd just duplicate it over and over. You'd mix up that exact same thing. But I think it was, I always come back to authenticity, because the fact that we didn't think anybody was going to watch this show is kind of what made us think, well, let's just make a show that we're really proud of and that we like, because nobody's going to watch it anyway. So we weren't, <laughs> we weren't jumping through hoops to try and please anybody to get a second season, because we always sort of just thought we that was not going to We were just having a really wonderful summer creating something together, you know, yeah. that was and awesome. I, I like, think people picked up on that. I think people picked up on that authenticity. Oh, they're having a good time. No, that first year was like summer camp. Yeah. Yeah. Well, adult summer camp where we could go to bars. Very <laughs> adult <laughs> summer camp. <laughs> was, was this like going? Was this like a camp reunion then? Uh, without the bars. Yeah. <laughs> it was just nice yeah. to get together. It was. It was really out. nice. Yeah. Like, and we really are family. I know people say it. Like, and it, but people say it because it's true. Yeah. Like, we really are. Not uh, genetically. We're not <laughs> genetically family. <laughs> But we do, we, you know, yeah. that's how we look at each other. Right. You know, anytime there's something significant in our lives, we make sure everybody knows about it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. you maintain that contact in between yeah. the show and that. Yeah. I uh, mean, we're all spread out, yeah. so we don't get to, I mean, that's what was so special about this was we were all in the same room and got to spend a month together. Yeah, yeah we yeah. don't get to do that very often. Yeah. I mean, as you say, everybody says, oh, we're just like a family and, and you know, to the point where it's... it's because they're they're all lying. They, they are. They're a lot of bold-faced liars. 90% of the time they are because if it's true, 
it shows in the work. It comes through on the screen. And this show, again, it, it was very clear it was a labor of love for you guys to make. Um, and I think that came through. And I also think, really, the, the, what really, I think, made people so faithful to the show and so addicted to the show are the characters. I think they really related to the characters. And I think that's the wonderful thing about the movie, is we come back into these people's lives. And they haven't changed. Yeah, they're, they're still changed. the same. And, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but and yet, there is a sense that time has gone by. But again, it's that That's just my hairline you're talking about, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's that thing about Dog River. It's like just this little snowflake globe, you know. Yeah, it's a little pocket. Time doesn't really affect it in many ways. You know, a lack of change was kind of thematic of the show. Mm -hmm. I, I I never wanted the episodes to arc. I didn't want the seasons to arc. I always wanted everything that we started should end up where it was before, so you could just pick up again the next episode. And it was kind of thematic of, you know, small towns sometimes being resistant to change. And just the fact that these people have their lives and they like their lives, such as they are. Um, and I feel like it's real. <laughs> It, it, like, it, I, I'm not even connected to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, I feel like it's real. Yeah, like, they're, that's that town. Yeah. <laughs> they're going about their business. And when we're not there filming, like they're crazy. and we stop the cameras, they're just there going about their business. Yeah. It's still going on. Mm -hmm. What was it like coming back together after, uh, how many years had it been in between? Six, Six years. years. Six years. So, that, that's a fairly good chunk of time. What was it like? I was, I mean, I was a little nervous going in because I thought, well, we haven't played these characters for a, a long time. Is it going to feel the same I mean are we and it was crazy awesome and a total trip I'm telling my mom it was <laughs> trippy <laughs> we got back and it felt like we had never left each other it yeah. really did like it was like okay hey yeah like a matter of weeks yeah. had passed yeah kind of. I think it's really, I feel it's like that to watch too oh that's good yeah no it was even just being back in Regina it was just it was it was a, it was a trip yeah <laughs> you're freaking me out you guys <laughs> Don't be so square. <laughs> it was even, it was in, we were talking earlier, like even in some cases it was even more comfortable. It was more, yeah. I don't know, it was, it's really, it's hard to explain, but it, because I, same thing, I was, I, I was it. nervous about how's it going to be, how's it going to be uh, taken in, and then at some point I was like, I don't care, I'm just excited to go back, and when I got there it was, it was literally like no time had passed, just like the show, like mm -hmm. being with everybody again, and um, even kind of seeing each other again for the first time like there were hugs and like it's great to see you and stuff but, but it, it just, wasn't like oh it's going to take a little while for us to all feel comfortable with each other it was yeah. like right yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. E even when we got together that that hello hug almost seemed like this isn't necessary because it, it just felt like didn't i just see you like yeah. it really felt like that time ha disappeared somewhere you know yeah. Yeah. and again it's the same for people watching it well, I hope that's true. I, 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 you know. Yeah, no, we just drop right back into these people's lives, and it's, it's, it's. I guess maybe it's somehow reassuring that nothing's changed in Dark River. <laughs> well, I, there's I, a certain consistency there that you can't find in real life. Yeah, there's a comfort to knowing that, you know, things change, and some of it's good, some of it's bad, and all of it is unsure. And just knowing that there's this pocket where things don't change, there's a comfort to it. I think people get a comfort out of Corner Gas. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also, I, I would imagine, <laughs> it's a fairly obvious observation, that you guys established a certain shorthand, a certain, you know, in working together so closely for so long. We can actually communicate telepathically sometimes. Uh, well, we, uh, there you go. Uh, we're insulting you right now. <laughs> we're talking trash. <laughs> there are certain rhythms, though, that, that, that are specific to the show that I, I'm guessing you just slipped right back into. It. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're right. I think there is a rhythm to it. And one of the concerns in trying to convert a 22-minute show that has known characters and known rhythm and, and known pace and trying to transform that into a 90-minute thing, that was, the, that was the tricky part in this. And, mm -hmm. and you could see where it wasn't working in the early drafts of the script. And you could see where what we were putting together was damaging what people liked about Corner Gas and also not getting us where we needed to be. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we wrote on the script for two years. To, yeah. to, it was a year and a half before I felt comfortable enough to say, I think this could work, let's call the cast and see if yeah. they want to do it. Because you had to get, they had to, it, it had to give you everybody everything that they were used to, but it also had to deliver yeah. something else, not just in terms of the length, 
But, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody who wants to see this, but it's really ingenious the way that you break it up, the way that it starts. I'm sorry, could you say that again? <laughs> ingenious. Oh, I thought that's what you said. <laughs> uh, the structure of it, uh, the way that you tell this story is, is very unique, and it manages to do both of those things. Yeah, well, the, story was, the stories were first kicked around by myself and two guys that wrote on the series, Andrew Carr and Dylan Wirtz. We kind of came up with the stories together. And then Dylan had another job, so he couldn't write on the script. So myself and Andrew Carr uh, started writing the script out. And then we recruited a guy named Andrew Reggett, who ha has more long-form experience. And I think that was really important to have a guy to, you know, so Andrew Carr and I were really familiar with Corner Gas, as he was, he was a fan of the show, but he's familiar with longer form stuff, and together we were able to kind of push and pull and get it to to that sweet spot, you know, because it, it, it is very tricky, that's why I said we took a long time, and if we couldn't get the script right, I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to do this at any cost, I only wanted to do this if I thought it could work and, and be something that was right and that people liked. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the way that this is being uh, presented to uh, the fans is, is unique and very Canadian in, in the sense that it's getting this, this, this limited theatrical run and it's going to tell the TV. It, it's, I think it's a really viable formula for, for, the indus for, for, for an industry that is, is fraught with uh, self loathing <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're also just at a time where so much is changing, nobody really knows how anything works anymore. Yeah. What was, you know, this established kind of model that existed for 50, 60 years um, is completely changed by this new technology and the internet and the fact that... I count all those kids. Those, those, those kids. rascals. <laughs> Everything would have been fine if it wasn't for <laughs> kids. But you're right, people are used to uh, consuming their entertainment when they want it and how they want it, whether it's on their phone or whether it's you know, on a tablet, laying in a beach chair on vacation, or wh wherever it is. And so, we had to address that. We had to address the fact that things are different now. And um, so, yeah, it's a very unique. It's going to be in theaters, which I really think people should go see it yeah. in theaters, because yeah. we, we really shot this. David Story, the director, really had a cinematic take on what, what we were doing, and it really shows when you watch it. Especially, you know, Saskatchewan's such a wide open space and seeing it on the big screen. It's really beautiful. Seeing Dog River in different ways, that like we had drones flying up above it, so you really get a sense of... Cause it, they were drones? Because I kept thinking of Johnny LaRue in the crane <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want a crane show. <laughs> but, but that was the one other thing I wanted to get to, is how, um, how cinematic this is. I mean, these, these wonderful sweeping shots of a gorgeous country. Yeah, absolutely. And you only got to see very small pieces of it in the TV show. Because remember, we also shot four by three. Yeah, when we first that's that's right. yeah, yeah. We were shooting in four by three, you know, virtually square format. Yeah. We we never even went sixteen by nine. The amount that technology changed from when we started doing Corner Gas, we were watching dailies on VHS tapes. I'd get the VHS tape. We were <laughs> shooting four by three format. And I remember we, having a read through or something, and Tara brought up this thing called YouTube. I was like, yeah. what's the YouTube? Yeah, because that I mean, was, was 2005, right? <laughs> you know. And so, and, and then now, and we now were, it's like, I was like, on set on Main Street, Rolo, watching an audition that they had sent to my phone so I could see the people that were auditioning for this part. I was sitting there on my phone. It was like, the audition took place 40 minutes ago. I'm watching it up there on my phone. The world changes, but corner gas stays <laughs> yeah. the same. Yeah. Isn't it good that some things, some things can be... I think so. I think it's... <laughs> is this it? Is this it? If this does hugely well, can we maybe see another movie in the future or another series? Maybe? I've always felt that uh, this was the end of it. You know, I wanted this to be the wrap-up. I wanted this to be the cherry on top. Having said that, I can always be bought. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for this. Love the film. Thank, Thank you. you.